welcome to London's Priorities, where my priority is teaching you gardening simplified. And today I'll be sharing some tips on how to battle pests organically in the most cheap, free, or cost-effective way. For the free tips that I'll be sharing today, I will link below in the description for blog posts going over these, as well as any products that I share here today, I'll link those below as well. My first tip. And this goes for anyone, no matter how you garden, whether you do it organically or you use chemicals. When you plant your garden, think about the way nature functions outside of your garden. You never walk in the woods and stumble upon a whole crop of corn or a whole crop of squash, right? So create diversity in your garden. Do not plant all of one plant in one area. If bugs were to invade or you had a pest infestation, they're eating your entire crop. If you were to spread these crops out into smaller little plots, what you're doing is giving your yourself time to allow to come up with a solution to handle the bug at hand while portions of your crop are being affected. And for example, this is what I mean. This is a plot of potatoes. This is a second plot of potatoes, and as you see, they are separated by a plot of broccoli with several other herbs as well as other plants. By having these two separated, once one of these are affected, I can take action on the bed affected, but I also allow my time, myself time to come up with a solution for the other. Number two, companion planting. And the companion planting is something that you'll hear me harp on a lot because it is a great defense mechanism for pests in your garden, but it also creates diversity within your garden. And we all know that the more that you create a diverse ecosystem for your garden, the more that it thrives. Below in the description, I will link a blog post that I've done recently going over some companion planting. But companion planting does far more than just create diversity or even help against pests. Uh, by companion planting, I've found that it also sometimes can increase the yield or even the flavor. And for one example, with tomatoes, I always companion plant basil because basil also enhances a tomato's flavor and it helps against those pesky hornworms. And I'll take you to the garden real quick and show you a few examples of companion planting in my garden. Sage planted with your strawberries is a great way to keep slugs away from your strawberries. Marigolds and basil are really great defense mechanisms against the hornworm that often attack the tomatoes. Marigolds are also great defense mechanisms against squash vine borers as well as squash bugs. Borage is a very, very good defense mechanism against these bugs as well. I just had a hard time finding them this year. Number three, I understand that companion planting is not always the best option for everyone. Maybe due to financial restraints or maybe you just don't have the, the amount of space to plant all of this diversity. So one product that I highly recommend that people use in their garden to battle pests is diatomaceous earth. You're gonna wanna always go with a food grade. When I recommend this product, I always stress to people, never put this product on your actual blooms of your plant. And preferably, don't put it on the tops of the leaves because guess what? That's not where your bugs are hiding, nor where they like to lay their eggs. Just one bag of this stuff can last you a long time, and let me tell you how to stretch it. Save your wood ash. Mix your diatomaceous earth with your wood ash, and it's also a great for a dust bath for your chickens, but even better for your plants to help with pest. What you'll want to do is dust the back of your plant leaves, never on the top. And the reason why is, say you get a quick rain shower, then the sun pops up, it's going to burn your plants. Number two, if you dust the tops and block the sunlight too much from the plant, it's going to start to slowly die. You want to always dust the bottom of the leaves or the base of the plant, never around the blooms. And the reason why is your pollinators are trying to get to those blooms. If they get diatomaceous earth on them, they're just as dead as the pests. A real simple and easy way to apply diatomaceous earth either by itself or mixed with the wood ash, and I only do like a half and half mixture with that, is by using a baby powder bottle filling it halfway to create that air and just going right below your plants on the leaves, especially like squash uh, plants or broccoli, and just squirting your bottle to create that powder puff on them. Number four. This one I just started using this year, but I absolutely love it. And this is the three-in-one garden spray from Maggie's Farm. And I will flip this around to let you see. Here it is. There are the ingredients. 
and it smells exactly like Tyne. And let me tell you what else is great about this spray. This is a woman-owned business made in the U.S., and it is so safe for your garden that they didn't even have to register this product with EPA. And just look at all the pests that it covers. Number five, BT. BT is a spray that I've been using for several years in my garden. And let me just show you what the bottle looks like. You can buy the pre-made spray. And as you see here, with all it covers. Or you can buy the concentrate and mix it yourself. When I have exhausted all other efforts, this is my go-to spray. And the reason being is squash vine borers, it seems like year after year, are getting more persistent and more resistant to a lot of other methods used to combat them. And what I've found is that this BT spray is the most effective thing that I have against them besides my companion planting. BT is a natural and safe spray. I highly recommend buying that concentrate because after you buy a couple of bottles of the pre-made stuff, you could have already made a couple of gallons from the concentrate. As with any spray, just like when you water your plants, I always highly suggest doing it late in the evening versus even in the morning. And the reason being is you do not want direct sunlight on your plants when you're treating them for pests or even watering them. That can greatly increase your chances of burning the leaves. And by doing it later in the evening, I have found, personally, I have found that I have more effective chances on decreasing these pest populations by treating them in the evening. Early in the morning and late in the evening is typically when I see these pests the most. One other tip that I'll share with squash vine borers is that if you try all of these methods and you've even moved on to purchasing chemicals like 7Dust, right? and you're starting to see that that's not even working, do me a favor. Wait a little later in the season. Wait till about June, mid-June, even late in June, and plant your squash then. What I have found is when all efforts have been exhausted and these guys are still persistent, if I plant later in the season, when they're not as active, I have more successful rates of having a high squash yield versus killing all of my plants. Those are all the tips that I have for today. I do plan in a later video and blog post to cover some homemade sprays that I've used in the past. This year so far, I've been so busy, I haven't had a chance to make those, so I didn't show those now. So I've been leaning heavily on my companion planting as well as some of the uh, products that I shared with you today. Be sure to like and subscribe as I will be releasing these videos weekly. If you haven't already, sign up and become a member on my website as it is totally free. As always, my inbox is always open for any questions, so you can email or message me there, and happy gardening, guys.